What's up guys, Eli here, back for another CD collection video. Um, we're just going to be picking up uh, where we left off last time. Um, we're in the H's. Um, almost all metal here. We're going to be starting off with the, uh, let's see, the uh, 2008 debut album from uh, the Netherlands, Hail of Bullets, with uh, A Frost and War. Um, this came out, yeah, like I said, in 2008, Metal Blade Records. Um, of course, there was quite a, quite a, uh, quite a lot of talk when this album came out. Um, Halo Bullets essentially were a super group, um, you know, in every, every, every meaning of the word. You know, you had Martin Van Drunen on vocals, which, I mean, you know, one of the most legendary vocalists in all of death metal. You also had Ed Warby, um, also as, also from S Fix, just like, uh, you, just like Martin. Um, so you had other dudes from S Fix, you had dudes from Thanatos, I mean, this was a Dutch super group for sure. Um, and I gotta say, so they, I think they had three or four albums. I always liked this one the most. Halo Bullets, Frost and Fire, or <laughs> Frost and Fire, Frost and War. I always thought this was the best. Maybe it's because I heard it first, obviously. I heard it as it came out. I don't know, it just always stuck with me. Um, but whatever, you know, however you want to put it, it's good death metal. Um, you know, it didn't sound like a, a clone of Asphyx or Pestilence or anything like that. It had its own sound. Um, maybe a little bit more melodic than uh, than than those bands. Um, still pure pure Dutch death metal. I mean, even even if you didn't know who this was, I think within a song or two you'd be like, these guys are Dutch. <laughs> I think there's you know they're the the Dutch sound is there, and like I said, just the right amount of melody. It's just a really really good, catchy, well written, well thought out death metal album. Um, from there, we're gonna go to this is quite the jump. We're gonna go to. Uh, the the one album this this band or should I say this lineup uh, put out you might rem remember this one Heaven and Hell um, yeah this came out in uh, 2009 this band was active from 2006 to 2010 it was basically I mean this basically is a Black Sabbath album um, this this was <laughs> this was you know this was the, the a Black Sabbath lineup at least you know Ronnie James Dio Tony Iommi if Tony Iommi's in it, it's Black Sabbath. I mean, essentially. Um, but yeah, Geezer Butler and Vinny Apice. So this was a Black Sabbath album. It sucks that we couldn't call it that. And it, it's a pretty good album. It's the only thing they did. Uh, this came out on Rhino Records. Um, anyways, it was the only thing they did, uh, full length-wise. Um, I mean, Ronnie would die. I think Ronnie died a couple years after this. But uh, the basic, basically the reason why this isn't called Black Sabbath is because they couldn't use the name. Even I mean, <clears throat> even Tony and Geezer didn't have full ownership of the name. Sharon Osbourne, of course, has it. And so they call themselves Heaven and Hell. Um, it's not a great album. It's not something I return to often, but it is good. Um, it's And it's, it's, it's one of those Black Sabbath albums that is kind of Black Sabbath at their... <clears throat> I don't want to say heaviest, because people are going to be like, well, Master, it's not heavier than Master of Reality or Paranoid. Um, I'd say at their most modern heaviness. So, like, if you're a fan of, uh, if you like the Dehumanizer album, this is not as well written, and it's not, it's just not as good as the, as Dehumanizer. But it's still along those lines. It sounds, it sounds like Dehumanizer Part Two. Um, good, just not nearly as good as that album. That album I actually do consider bordering on great. Um, this is not great, but it's 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 good. It's worth owning. It's worth listening to repeatedly. Um, I could say that much for sure. Next, uh, these, uh, we're going to stay in England for now. We're going to go to a band that was actually... Um, this band had their roots in you know the new wave of uh, British heavy metal the scene or movement, whatever you want to call it. Um, they, they formed in 82, so I mean, they weren't... They kind of, 82 is considered basically the, the very tail end of, of, of that, 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 uh, that era. Um, I, th I think I've seen some people say even 81 was basically the end of, of 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 it but i would say maybe i think 82 you're still hanging in there i don't know i wasn't like um i was barely alive back then but anyway the band we're talking about is hell um this is their debut album human remains um so this guy came out in uh 2011 um a lot of history behind this band like i said they, you know they formed in 82 uh they only really did like um they only had a couple uh singles and, and demos and rehearsals and stuff like that they didn't have a lot of material originally 
Um, they certainly wouldn't have a full length until, you know, years and years later, like I said. Like I said, this guy came out in 2000, uh, 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 2011. Um, they would put out two albums. Uh, they wouldn't have the exact same lineup they did in the early 80s. That just, uh, that just didn't work out. Their, their original singer um, actually passed away. Sorry, I'm kind of messing with my uh, messing with my screen here. Kind of making some adjustments. I really need to figure out a way to get better lighting, um, <laughs> as if it's that complicated. But anyways, yeah, it, it, really cool. Like I said, for that reason. Um, so that yeah, their original singer would die. They would they would. Some of the other guys would come back with uh, Andy Sneap. You might know him from producing a shitload of albums, like uh, and currently in Judas Priest. Andy Sneap would be on guitar here. Um, and so the original singer, yeah, David Halliday, he's the one that died. Um, they actually ended up replacing him with a guy who was absolutely perfect. Um, I think even if Andy had been alive, or I mean, if David had been alive to this day, he couldn't have done a better job than, than, than this. Um, he uh, put absolutely the most love and respect to you know their original singer that, that anyone could possibly have done um, this album is so good uh, i consider this one of if not the best heavy metal album in the last jesus christ in the last 20 years easily easily maybe longer maybe 30 i think this album is phenomenal um a lot of the material i think at least half of it even three quarters of it were um uh, redone songs from you know from the original uh, incarnation, um, which is fine. I would have liked to have heard more originals, but they really it was cool because none of those songs really ever were on a full length album. So it's actually it works very well. You, you got a you know a combination of songs written in the early '80s and then you know a couple songs written uh, in the modern times. And I would I I'd be willing to say that the you know the early '80s songs are definitely better. Which is kind of why I think this band didn't go very far. I think they just kind of their, uh, I don't know if it's their motivation kind of waned, but I, I, I kind of feel like they really just couldn't, uh, I don't think they had as much gas in the tank as they probably thought that they had. But, you know, they put out two killer albums, this one being the better of the two. Um, and this version, if you're going to get this album, this came out on uh, Nuclear Blast, by the way, if you're going to get this album, get this double disc version, you absolutely have to. The second disc actually has the original uh, demos and singles and rehearsals. Um, I think everything they did in the early days all on one disc, um, along with, you know, the, the Human Remains album on the other disc. But you, it, like I said, if you're going to get it, you must get that version because then it's, you, <laughs> it's the only way you'll ever own those songs because, I mean, those, those obscure, you know, uh, NWOBHM uh, singles and, and demos and stuff, those are nearly impossible to find. And if you do find them, I mean, you're gonna have to, you're gonna have to take out a loan on your house just to get it. So, um, yeah, definitely look into this album by Hell. Uh, not as good, but I'm still glad to have it. I'm glad they put it out. But uh, let's see. I think this was two years later. I think this was in, yeah, this was in uh, 2013. So two years went by. Still on Nuclear Blast. They put out Curse and Chapter. Um, following suit. With the uh, with the debut, um, a lot of these songs, most of them even were songs already written in the early '80s, um, just reworked and uh, yeah, touched up for you know an actual full length album. Um, that said, I you know there is definitely a lot of quality here. I don't, I just, I think it, I think this album falls so short of of the debut. Still a very good album. Still very much worth getting, still very much worth listening to, but you won't hear me, you know, give it the same accolades, you know, I just did for the first album. That album was, I think I'd honestly call that a modern classic, and this album, I just wouldn't. <laughs> so this one's a little weird uh, to, to, to be in my collection, because I'm, I'm not a big fan of this. I do think it's good, um, and I, I just don't listen to stuff like this too often, but when I saw this at a record store some years ago, I had to get it. Um, this came out in two or ninety six. This is a uh, this is a single from the Swedish band the Helicopters. You've probably heard of them. In the in metal circles, they're kind of known for uh, Nick A. Anderson of Entombed. Um, this this was like his band after Entombed, basically. Um, a lot of people call this a punk band. Um, there definitely is some punk on here, but there's also like 
there's also some like some 60s and 70s garage rock going on here um it's it's very well written very well played it's very catchy it's just not my cup of tea but uh yeah you got to appreciate these old singles you know if you were collecting shit in the 90s or earlier you remember those little little skinny cases yeah so i don't know how many of you guys like the helicopters um this is actually the only thing from them i've heard uh maybe they have better stuff but <clears throat> like i said it's just not my cup of tea that uh but that said it is good i mean they are they're a good band there's no there's no debating that um, some people really really love that band all right we're gonna go into poland um this is a band that formed in 96 by uh uh, by ex uh, ex behemoth members actually um, I can't I can't remember if they quit entirely to, to start this band or if they started this band while they were still in behemoth either way they were in behemoth uh, we're talking about hellborn yet another you know black death band out of Poland um, this uh, this is a very typical sound to come from Poland in the 90s or even this year it wouldn't matter um, this came out on conquer records by the way um, yeah, so 96 was when they started. This album is actually from um, 2001. This is their debut album. They did have some, I think they had an EP, maybe some demos before this, but uh, it's pretty good. I do like this band a lot. This is not my favorite of theirs. To me, I mean, this is pretty standard, uh, you know, Polish Black Death. Um, I think we all know what that sounds like. Very heavy, very brutal, um, <laughs> very fast, lots of black beat, blast beats. Um, a lot of guitar solos, just everything, you know, turned up to 10. <laughs> everything that we liked about Vader, but, you know, turned up a couple more notches. Um, I'm not saying quality-wise, I'm just saying, you know, tonal-wise. Um, good album. Definitely look into Hellborn if you haven't heard them. But I wouldn't recommend starting there. I would actually recommend starting here. Um, two years later, this is a 2003 Legacy of the Nephilim. Um, so it looks like I'm not the only one that likes this album a lot, because... John McEntee of uh, Incantation would uh, actually put this out on his Ibex Moon Records uh, label. As you can see right there. I think this album is, this is their third album, and I think this is far superior to anything that they ever did, before or after. I just think that everything, you know, that they were trying to do, I think they did right on this album. And, um, you know, after this, they would kind of go down a little bit more of a modern route. Um, maybe not entirely, but... This album's very good. Um, uh, this next one, I don't really have a whole lot to say about this. I think I would sound kind of stupid if I uh, tried to talk about it. But um, this is not really a band that I listen to often. However, I do like a lot. I'm, I, I, I prefer um, Celtic Frost. But uh, I like Hellhammer. We all do. We got uh, Apocalyp Apocalyptic Raids. Uh, originally re released, I think, in 84. Yeah, 84. I have the 1999 uh, version, whatever you want to call it. Uh, came out on Sanctuary Records. Um, so, yeah, obviously, you know Hellhammer. You know, one of the most, uh, one of the most, you know, cult bands to ever come out of uh, Switzerland. Um, you know, they would later on become Celtic Frost, um, who I think far superior. But uh, Hellhammer were awesome in their own right. <clears throat> uh, you know, they pioneered a lot of genres, but, you know, death metal, black metal. I mean, uh, they had a huge hand in creating those genres, both. Uh, we've got a couple left here. Now we have the uh, 1988 uh, third full length uh, from Germany's Halloween. We all know them. We all love them. I'm not the biggest Halloween fan, to be honest. I, I like their early stuff. I even like their later stuff. I just, I'm not a massive fan, so... As you know, you know they were one of the bands, one of the you know the one of the main bands on the on the Noise International roster. Old good old Noise Records there. Um, I actually have the RC Records version or, or RCA, um, which was a German label as well. Yeah, it was an original pressing. Um, like I said, there's this is their third full length. I, I, I think I said the title. This is obviously this is Keepers of the Seven Keys Two. I have Keeper of the Seven Keys One, but I have it on tape, so uh, I wouldn't mind getting it on CD. But I'm not really worried about it either. So, uh, classic album, you know, definitely one of their best. Not usually considered the best by a lot of Halloween diehards, but it's usually considered, you know, at least in the top probably three.
three or four albums of uh, of their catalog. And last but not least, I have kind of an oddball. Um, I always forget that I have this. As you can see, I've never even opened it. Um, this came out in 2007, and it is a, uh, a single. Still wrapped, as you can see. The It's got the OBI strip there. Uh, and Japanese writing on the side. Um, so yeah, this is called As Long As I Fall, which is uh, one of the tracks off this single, or the track of the single. But uh, this would come off the uh, full-length album that came out that same year called Gambling With The Devil, which I've never heard. Is it a good album? I haven't even heard this song. Clearly, I haven't even opened this thing. <laughs> I wonder what it looks like on the inside. But So yeah, Gambling With The Devil. I don't know if it's a good album or not. haven't heard it. Um, don't really care to. I mean, I might someday if it, if it crosses my path. But uh, anyways, guys, that's all I got for now. Um, <clears throat> I think the next video will be a new stuff video. Um, I don't have a lot. And I'm, I'm, I swear this time I'm not going to be, be getting much, uh, much new stuff and probably the next month or two, but I do have some really cool things I want to show you and talk about. So definitely, definitely catch the, that video, you know, if, if you can. Um, yeah, you'll want, you'll want to see some of this stuff and talk to me about it. So, but we're not talking about that. We're talking about this stuff. So go ahead and talk to me about Halloween, <clears throat> Hellhammer, Hell, <laughs> Heaven and Hell, whatever. Anyways, thanks for stopping by guys. Cheers. We'll talk soon.